Welcome back to Bleach Anime Review Special. This is a special, this is a special number one. And in this special, I'm going to talk about the final arc of the Bleach manga. I recently, yesterday, finished it up. And I kind of figured, though, why not do a special talking about the, the last arc of the manga, which was never adapted because, pro because a lot of people didn't like the full bringer arc in the anime. So I guess, oh, let's just cancel the anime before we got a chance to adapt the final arc. The final arc is mainly it takes up like the like the last uh i think it's the last um 207 chapters but actually it stops at 205 chapters the last couple are just the epilogue which i'll get to that soon and, it, and the questions i have for that as well but simply put the 205 chapters which encompass the last arc simply put it because of the final arc of the end, the final arc of the manga. They just bring back characters and kill off characters for some for good reasons, some for really not so good reasons to kill them off. Um, <clears throat> the arc starts off with these new Soul Reavers who basically stop pairing about partway through this uh, this arc. Yeah, these new Soul Reavers don't really care about them at all. I just wanted to get back to Ichigo, see what he's up to, because apparently it's been like a month since the Fullbringer arc, so I guess they decided to just have a jump ahead one month later, and, uh, and apparently Ichigo find, uh, rescues these um, Soul Reapers from being, from being almost eaten by uh, Hollows. Apparently these, these uh, they're, they're not very well experienced. He, he saves one of them, and brings him back to his house for some reason. Heals him up, and yeah, and Ichigo. By the way, in case you're wondering, I'm using uh, the image is basically Ichigo uh, combination of full bringing his Bankai form. Yeah, he still has this. He actually has this form until about halfway through the manga, halfway through the arc, where he gets a brand new look. I kind of like this look, anyways. But I digress. And. Basically, it just okay. Then, then, and this is only in just the first uh, couple chapters. Yeah, and then I think it's like chapter two ends with what appears to be in a Ron car, who somehow gets into Ichigo's bedroom. This is of course during the daytime, and he's staying at Ichigo's bed, and he's like, "Get off my bed and get out of my house," <laughs> because he thinks he's in the Ron car here to attack him. Now I should point out though this actually has actually has happened several times both in the manga and the anime, where people love to go to Ichigo's bedroom. I am not kidding. First it was Rukia, then it was uh, Renji, Ikaku, Yamchi, ya Yamachiya, um, Renji, and Toshiro, along with of course Ichigo's normal friends who basically uh, who are there like Orihime, Chad, or who's been in there. Um, Tatsu, and of course everybody else has been in there, but th there was even this um, episode in the second to last or, uh, second to last season of the of the series where the, where it was they had the copycat Soul Reapers, where they were like clones of the uh, actual Soul Reapers, and and this was actually was quite funny, like the people who were copied, yeah, they they they, they did something quite funny. They had everybody just. Have me to get Ichigo's bedroom for some reason, like they had Mayuri and Nim and and um, Nemu uh, basically sit on Ichigo's desk, and you have Kapashi sitting in Ichigo's bed. It is so funny to see all these characters just cram into Ichigo's bedroom because apparently this is like the only place people love to go when they go to the rare world and just hang out with Ichigo. Heck, they even did this in the Omics where. Um, his bedroom was used as a storage room where the, the female Soul Reapers basically went on their shopping sprees. Yeah, it's it's a recurring joke, both in the anime and the manga. Basically, everyone just loves showing up there. Anyways, kicks him out of the bedroom, and he thinks it's a wrong car, but actually it's a Quincy who has a piece of a wrong car mask for some reason, and he beats him. I mean, he knows he's a Quincy because, well, the Quincy Cross, obviously. And then, like, not long after that, Nell just drops out of the sky. Yeah, Nell, and along with, of course, um, one, one, one of her two, Bejor, I think that's how you pronounce them, one of her two associates, uh, the one who basically hung around with Uru during the Ironka arc. It is so, ha I'm so happy to see Nell, because she's one of my personal favorites of uh, Ironkars, especially since that, 
she's so cute when she's a little when she's just a little, little child and she's smoking hot when she's in her hot when they're adult form. Probably even each ago probably realizes, yeah. She's smoking hot. Yep. And she tells him, yeah. Uh, wake up, it's the way she, the way she basically appears, Ichigo's like, Ichigo! He just, yeah, this is a common, this is a common recurring joke which she did during the Ronka arc. And this is the first that I have seen her, chronologically, since, uh, Ron Car number five was, was killed by, um, Kapachi. Yeah, every, like, not, 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 not since Kapachi killed the Ron Car number five, that was the last time people saw her, where she saw him actually die. The guy who basically cracked her, uh, mask. And he tells her, like, yeah, Wicked Moon has been invaded, so we have um, Ichigo or he made Chad, uh, of course, Nell. And Kitsuke decides to go to Wicked Moon, too, for some reason. And uh, they go there to liberate it from the army of evil Quincy's, the Yarich. I think it's they pronounce them. Yeah, it's basically a German name. Yeah, that's one thing interesting about, that's one thing odd about. You can say odd, interesting about the Quincy's. A lot of their names, their, their names for their ob, their uh, their objects, even their even their groups are basically all German names. I'm not kidding. It's all German names. Like, like um, yeah, like I think it's Jan Swan. I can't think if they pronounce it. Yeah, basically the way Uri pronounce the way the uh, the dub actor pronounce it. Basically, he he he, he pronounces these words with, with a German accent. Yeah, it's basically all bunch of German words, and they show these evil Quincy's when they wear they pretty much wear almost exact duplicate outfits of what Uru's not wearing in the end, both in the animated manga. Except they wear like white masks, and if you look at them, they kind of remind me of well, probably an early, probably uh, from looking at them, they, they they look like the way the German army dressed uh, if, if their outfits were white from World War One. Yeah. That's what they. That's what their alphas look like, and apparently they uh, during the intermediate time between like after Eisen's defeat and now, apparently a Ron Carter number three, who basically took over for Nell, she becomes the de facto ruler of Wega Moon. Apparently she's captured. Oh, and by the way, does anybody go rescue her? Nope. She's seen for one panel and she's never seen again. Yeah, and it kind of liberates Wet Wega Mundo. Uh, after a little while. And Ichigo goes to Soul Society because Soul Society is being invaded by the evil Quincy's. I call them evil Quincy's. I prefer not to call them by their, their action name because it's kind of hard to pronounce. So I just call them the evil Quincy's. And what do these guys do when they first show up in the Soul Society? They kill uh, Captain Yamamoto's uh, lieutenant. That's the first thing they do. And, they, and then they go on a killing spree. Killing several Soul Reapers, including Lieutenant of Squad 3 who appeared... Uh, several times, both in the Soul Society arc and the Iran car arc. Matter of fact, in the Iran car, he actually killed in the Iran car by decapitating it with, with, with his uh, with, with his with his sword, which basically forms into a giant question mark, which is odd. Yeah, he gets killed very easily. Where apparently, like part of his side gets blasted open. Oh yeah, yeah, and he shows up later on in the in, in the uh, in the manga. Apparently he's alive and well. He says, "Oh yeah, I'm a dead man." He has this piece of wire sticking out of him. I'm like, "How did this happen?" Yeah, that question basically is not going to answer until the first, uh, till death not do us part. I think that's what it is the the first light novel that came out six months ago. Yeah, that question does get answered. Of uh, how the heck he survived, and I'll explain that when, when I talk about the the my thoughts on the English on the fan tra fan English translation of the. Uh, light novel and Ichigo goes to the Soul Society and for some reason it's like apparently he's the only one who can go because apparently Orihime and Chad just get sort of left behind with Kabuto with Kisuke and Kisuke just sort of does a lot of studying in Wikimundo oh yeah and apparently the Quinties have this item that allows them to steal people's bonkais no kidding that's basically one one of the things that they can do, they can steal people's bonkais and use them against them. And later on, Keyscape develops sort of a countermeasure to that, which basically blocks where he gives it to all the um, anybody who has a bonkai, anybody who has a, pretty much gives all the captains with it, gives us this black pill, and it blocks them from taking their uh, 
Bankai, anybody who had taken the Bankai, it's poison to them. So taking a good chunk of the Quincy's. And when they had the main villain show up, which, by the way, he's a guy with a mustache. Big bulking guy with a mustache. Go figure. I mean, he, he doesn't have a bad look, and later on, who he really is, I'll get to who, who he actually is related to. It's quite bizarre. And what he does is quite shocking. He kills Head Captain Yamamoto in, single, in a very brutal conflict, very brutal combat. Yeah, he kills him. Yeah, so in their first invasion, they kill the Head Captain and, and his lieutenant and several Soul Reapers. Wow, that's actually something. And anybody who had their Bankai stolen had to go through retraining, sort of basically to get to get sort of a new version of the Bankai in a way. And Ichigo basically just decided just to hang around for a bit. And basically if it's ever got because because they had so many injuries. I oh yeah, and apparently the head captain thought it'd be a good idea to have squad four being confined to their barracks. And that was his last order. Um, why in the world would he even do that? It's 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 a stupid order. Half the time he issues dumb orders that really make no sense. It's just my honest opinion that basically because he was a because he was a head captain for a thousand years, he got senile. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of people probably believe that, but his order was stupid. So they had to make confined to barracks, and a lot of people were injured. Heck, Renji. Rukia and Biak were injured very heavily. Each go injured a little bit, but not as bad. And then something. Oh yeah, I should also mention though that um, uh, three of the Vizards were actually restored to their uh, captain positions. Um, uh, the blonde hair guy with the with the, with the very I don't know like strange looking teeth. Yeah, he was restored to the captain of squad three. Uh, actually, squad five. Love was restored to the captain of squad. Uh, nine. No, he was three. Yeah, three. And the guy who's built like a football player, he was restored to the captain of squad nine. Yeah. And, oh yeah, and by the way, the the captain, the, the, the guy who was one of the Vizards, who was restored to captain, captain of squad nine, yeah, he actually dies. Well, apparently dies and gets turned into a freaking zombie. Along with several other people on uh, panel. As for how the Quincy's have this ability, never explained at all. But uh, then they decided to have Ichigo meet Squad Zero. Basically, anybody who invented something in the Soul Society could basically part of this. The last person to become part of this was, was, was Hisuke's predecessor, it's Captain Squad 12. And they run into her. And she has put on like 100 pounds since she was last seen. I'm like, heck, even um, Himri basically is like, who are you? He's like, don't you remember me? You know, bring uh, Hillary Chan with you? He's like, really? Is that you? Because <laughs> he was shocked to see that she had put on so much weight over the years. And it had been like a hundred years. I mean, had she not told... Had, has um, no one told her that he had, had he only had just resumed his post as Captain of Squad 5 only two years prior? I don't know. And apparently they insult... Um, Regina Urha basically, oh yeah, her, her healing techniques are not good enough, so they take three people who are seriously injured, who could easily die. They took Renji, Byakuga, and Rukia to the, the, the Soul Palace, the, the Soul King's Royal Palace, which it is one of the most interesting designs I have ever seen. It's basically, it, it, it's, it's basically floating above the regular, uh, it's floating like what appears to be like 10,000 feet in the air. Uh, basically, it's just about, I don't know, maybe 10, 15 feet above cloud cover. Apparently, no one can see it. Oh, yeah, and apparently the only way to get there is a special made, is basically using the, um, the fireworks cannon, which was used back in the Soul Society arc, which, which, which the, way, the way the manga is presented is that According to Ichigo's perspective, from the manga perspective, the, um, because she, I don't remember her name, the one who's the head of the Shiba clan, the one in charge of the firework cannon. Yeah, apparently this is the first time they've actually seen each other since Soul Society arc, which in the anime, they actually saw each other during the Bont arc. So, 
Yeah, it actually happened a lot, and, and um, her brother basically apparently got turned into a statue, so that was later to be a lie. Yeah, and they used that thing to be launched straight into the, to the um, Royal Palace, and they go several places, like, first they go to a hot spring, okay, fine, um, where apparently Ichigo's hanging out the hot spring with one, one of the guys, basically, his uh, thing came up with, came up with the idea of hot spring, so exciting. But apparently he's not the, the those two are not the only one in the hot spring. Also in there are Byakuya, Renji, and Rukia. Oh, and and Kibo thought they get out of this show off Rukia's rear end, her naked rear end. Yeah, I have no idea why he thought this was a good idea, but hey, I guess that from the male <laughs> viewers, basically, hey, we got a chance to see a, a first chance of nudity. One of two times we actually see anything nudity in this an actual arc. Oh, and the arc is full of lots of swearing. My gosh, I have never seen so much swearing in a manga. I mean, there's like about, probably about 60 F-bombs dropped. Uh, the S-word is said multiple times. And even the B-word, you know, the B-I-T-C-H. I'm not going to say it because I don't even like saying these swear words anyways. Yeah, they're not distracting, but at least they have a good reason for saying them. Now, I'm not sure why Kibo thought it was a good idea to have almost every single character swearing. But, hey, why not? And then they all go to, like, various places. Like, after everybody's, like, Byaki and R R Ruki are healed, uh, Ruki is later go to go through special training to learn her Bankai. Which, when they show her Bankai, it looks amazing. Or apparently she merged with her, well, what... What they show in the anime, which is basically a manifestation of, the, of her Zanpak toe, so called sweet. Yeah, where her skin turns pale white, even her hair turns white. She basically becomes like, she becomes a manifestation of what, what, what she, basically she looks like. Uh, Renji learns new Bankai. Uh, so sweet, basically, uh, who's the Captain Squad, he gets promoted to Captain Squad 1. Which, okay, he actually is not a bad idea, especially since that, one, he's, he was basically one of two people who was actually considered to be a, a closest thing that the head captain had to a son, and he's a student to head captain, so why not? And he's not like his quirky self, it's like, okay, he gets promoted to squad, he gets promoted to head captain, and he still has sort of his, um, his womanizing ways a bit. A little bit, but it's like toned down when he became the captain of squad, uh, captain, uh, head captain, and he does some controversial things, but I'll get to those in a minute. Oh yeah, and um, Kapachi learns his bankai. Yeah, it's also revealed that his lieutenant's actually the manifestation of his bankai. Okay, yeah, a lot of the revelations come completely out of left field in this. Now the bankais look really amazing. Oh, and uh, so sweet, basically, his Bankai is a good chance to be the manifestation of his Bankai. He's a smoking hot woman who's kind of like a female version of him with an eye patch. Yeah, and the last time I saw this woman was actually in the, in the, uh, the Zanpak Toar. Which, uh, yeah, I guess that Kibo must have liked the arc so much that he allowed certain characters to get their own manifestation of their own Bankai. Or at least manifestation of their own, um, uh, of their Zanpak toes. Oh, and, um, Sweet Shoe, I think his name is, the guy with the 69 tattoo in his face. Apparently, he has a Bankai. Okay. And Komaru basically, uh, learned to seek clan technique, but allowed him to learn, allowed him to go human for a brief period of time. And then later on, he goes back to wolf form and stays as a wolf and basically kind of retires from Soul Society after. He retires as, as the captain of Squad 7 after the, after this whole thing is over with. And they also meet the guys who basically, the guy who invented his Zanpak Toe, the guy who named everything in the Soul Society, and I do mean everything. Apparently he remembers the name of every single story for even their Bankais. Which I'm like, wow. This guy must have a really big brain or he must have a large filing cabinet in, it, in, in, his, in, his, in his palace. And... Like, I think it's the yeah the guy who invented Zanpak Toe. Apparently, that Ichigo probably fa Ichigo failed at some point, so he sent back to Earth somehow. 
you said back to the real world where he runs into uh where he basically sort of ends up at his house which is the clinic and later on he runs into his hot female his hot boss who oddly enough decides to start up a relationship with Ichigo's father yeah this comes completely out of nowhere where apparently yeah yeah, his excuse, oh yeah, he's taking care of a sick patient. Yeah, he's taking care of Ichigo's boss. Yeah, I'm like, okay. I guess because they saw each other, I was like, hey, can't, you want to, I guess she was probably thinking, hey, you want to have sex? They're like, sure. I'm like, wow. And then he gets sent back, and of course later he gets a brand new attire, which he, which he has for pretty much the rest of the manga. And... Chad or Hime basically go through training. Uru basically sort of joins inside the Quincy's world because he's a Quincy. And he's named the successor to Yabrich for some reason. I have no idea why. Well, apparently because, well, he was he was the last he was the last of the Quincy's and he's the only one who actually has been around for a long who actually has been active, so I guess that's the reason why he's named the successor. And Orihime basically gets a new attire, which even Ichigo calls it like very revealing, like even she thought it was like hentai stuff. Though when I saw like it looked like something out of Aladdin, the way she was dressed. And then Yorichi comes completely out of nowhere, and she just sticks her hand right through Orihime's breast. I'm like, what? Why the heck would she do that for? And she's like poking fun at her, uh, him for 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 doing that. Oh yeah, and uh, and they call upon a bunch of allies because basically, like everything is affected. So they call upon like because Kisuke spent so much time in the. Um, Wikamundo, he gave Noah a, a bracelet, not an armband like Wikipedia said, a bracelet that allows her to return, to return from either her kid form or her adult form. And also, Green Jow shows up. Hooray, I love Green Jow. He's one of my favorite Iran cards. Where he's got a slightly new attire, where he got the same, he still had the same coat he had during the Iran card arc, but he's got black pants, black boots. Oh yeah, and he wants to get to a fight each go soon as he sees him. And also, they bring back the Fullbringers! Characters people probably didn't care about. Well, they only like four of them, two for now and then two for later. They anyway, like Rukika, I think that's her name, the one who's the, the one has the cutesy powers, which in the anime, which I was so funny when, when Rukia first fought, he's like, yeah, and he gets like to the area with all the toys. He is like, she's like, yay, it's so, so cute! <laughs> it's like, it is so funny. And yet, in the manga, basically, it was kind of rushed, but the anime was, it was just, it was just a funny scene. And, um, and then you brought the kid, who basically, his former power is basically, he could bring his game console, uh, stuff from his game, from his PSP to life. Okay. And make this box, which acts like a giant elevator, which brings him straight up to the Royal Palace, which, by the way, at this point, um, Yelbert's basically infiltrated his Soul Palace, basically took out pretty much almost the entirety of Squad Zero, and he killed the Soul King. Yeah. Apparently the Soul King is a guy who sits on his knees in his throne room for hours on end. Okay. And apparently he holds all sides together. And when he's apparently killed, or he tries he kill him, he basically nearly dies. And y Yoshiro, the captain of Squad 13, apparently it's a build. He basically is from, the, he's actually descendant, he's actually part of a clan. Who basically trying to make up the right hand of the Soul King, and he sacrifices himself to uh, become the right the right arm of the Soul King. Okay. Oh yeah, and they all and and Maruchi basically, who's active in this whole arc, and Nemu, up until her death, she does virtually jack freaking squat. She just stands around, and does nothing. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of stuff that happens in this arc. Of course. Oh yeah, and also the Earth to Fullbringers. It's one Fullbringer who I know should be dead because Ichigo asked to bury him in the in the real world. The other one, I can't understand why he's still alive. Apparently, he uses his bookmark ability to basically fix Ichigo's sword, which apparently that uh, Yarich basically broke. Oh yeah, and basically it's also real that Yarich is the son of the Soul King. Yeah, that comes completely out of nowhere. And. Uh, I know I'm kind of rushing it, but this is just my summary of it. Of course, Screamjaw fights one of the Quincy's with the help of Kisuke and Nell. And then they're never seen again after that. As what happened to them, never explained. The Fullbringers, how the other two got there, never explained. 
the first two they're seen, and this shows exactly how they got there. Apparently, Kisuke found them in the desert someplace. I don't know how they got there. I have no idea. But, yeah. Um. Uh, but then, uh, Ur basically turns on the, the, uh, the, the leader of the evil Quincy's. Ichigo defeats him. Uh, basically by slicing him up, apparently killing him. Oh, and what happens with his body? Yeah, that question is answered in the light novel, which I'll get to in the next episode. Yeah, but once you finish reading that arc, you're like, you have a bunch of questions like, how do these characters get here? What happened to them? The light novel answers some of them, but not all of them. But overall, the last arc before the two-part epilogue, well, in my opinion, was actually good, but it left questions unanswered. A bunch of them. And I do mean a lot of... It seems like almost a hundred questions, basically. I feel a lot of people ask, like, like, how do these characters get here? What happened to them? And what happened to certain people afterwards? Oh, yeah, I almost forgot. Sosuke Aizen is really temporarily released in prison during this arc, and he meets the main villain of this arc. And then afterwards, he... After, after the Soul Society is saved, he returns to prison willingly. Have to be sentenced there for 20,000 years. Okay, oh yeah, and apparently this bindings. Apparently he had not spoken to anybody in two years. And, uh, so say basically, uh, used three keys to unlock his left eye, his mouth, and his ankles. And he spent the whole time being strapped to a chair. Okay, fine. And the reason why he was released, the reason why he basically got temporary release, because... Uh, so, so say basically said, okay, let's fight evil with evil. Also, he meets up with Ichigo, three of Ichigo's friends, um, Minzu, Keigo, and Tatsuku. Yeah, because because basically with this battle, basically Ichigo might be forced to basically fame the Soul Society. So, um, this might make a shock about, but he gives them three soul soul tickets, where they can visit the Soul Society anytime they want to, which. And Tosku basically kind of knows who he is because they kind of heard his name. But, hey, at least she remembered. I gotta give praise, basically, for uh, Tau Tatsu, basically, for remembering who the guy is. Even though he doesn't know his, she doesn't know his name, but she does know that he's the captain of Squad A. She, and she does know about the Soul Rapids because each girl explained it to her off panel, obviously. But, yeah, and then, of course, they, after uh, Yarwitz is defeated, it jumps ahead ten years later. For some reason, I have no idea. And Ikaku is promoted to basically at this point. Ikaku was new lieutenant of Squad Eleven. Um, oh, and or, or I almost forgot. Uh, Kapachi, in order to learn his, uh, in order to learn killing, he killed the captain of Squad Four, which she revert to her ultimate personality, which he was a criminal. Oh yeah, and they finally show her actual. Scar. I knew about the scar because I read about it. The scar looks like the Star of David, not like the way it's now depicted, basically, where you see on emblems. Like, how it's depicted in paintings. Yeah, that's what her scar looks like. Okay? Yeah, and she just fights Kapachi for a while, and she loses. And then her uh, lieutenant becomes the new captain of Squad 4, because, well, her captain died, so she takes over as the captain of Squad uh, 4. And somehow, during a time jump, her sister became uh, her new lieutenant. Somehow, uh, of course, you're in, I already knew about Rukia and Renji being married, and Orihime and, and uh, uh, Ichigo being married, and both of them have respectively got their own kids. And uh, Nemu basically is, well, basically looks like she's about a teenager ish. That's why she looks now, basically in 10 years. But pretty much is peaceful, and of course, Yawar's power comes back, and of course, Ichigo's son basically uses just one thing and boop! Gone. And the way the thing ends is like, what? Yeah, it ends with a shocking, looks like a cliffhanger, which to this day has never been resolved. It's almost a year since the manga ended. But in my opinion, the final arc was really good. The epilogue raised a bunch of questions too, but the light novel kind of basically explains, okay? So, good final arc. I do recommend it for people who basically never, uh, who basically. We want to see the stuff if you were say changing, but it's good luck overall. Next special, I'm talking about the light novel, my early reactions to the uh, fan translation of it. But uh, until I see you all in my next audio only review, bye.